Okay, kids, here it is, the fifth installment of The League of Extremely Ordinary Gentlemen. Did that come through? You were so low. Did it? Okay. You want me to do it again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, kids, are you ready for the fifth edition of The League of Extremely Ordinary Gentlemen? Did that come through? Because you were so cheesy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me try it again. <laughs> hey there, kids. What's up, you happening daddies? Let's give another listen this week to The League of Extremely Ordinary Gentlemen. Okay, that one was even worse than the first two, okay. but let's just cut our losses and, and get on with it. Okay, I, I should try to stop uh, uh, fluffing out my peacock feathers to impress this week's guest. Yes. Okay. Um, it, yeah, I, I just want to warn the audience from the last time. We have a, a girl sitting in again. A girl? So you know how <laughs> Cyrus is going to get throughout this whole thing. Well, no, that's not, you know, let's be fair, admittedly. I'll only go but so far because, let's face it, so will she. <laughs> and one restraining order is enough yeah anyway yes this is the fifth Le league of extremely ordinary gentlemen or leog for you acronym fans and uh this week our guest is stephanie she is an actual uh spillion i guess is the term we're going that with now that's right spillion. yeah well i like that that was I Jason like that. I, no. I okay. agree stephanie is 25 years old and her hobbies are walking on the beach and oh no wait pina coladas <laughs> that's the wrong website uh, she <laughs> describes herself as a geeky girl who loves movies. Boom, yes, boom. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> wow, I was really uncreative with that one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hmm, well, a geeky girl who loves movies. We don't have a lot of those on the site. Uh, <laughs> we normally do five questions. This kind of came together last minute this week, and I apologize, you guys, for it being late, but it was just one of those series of circumstances that made it there was just no way we could have done it on Wednesday. True. So, but, so, but hey, we, we got it now. Yes, we got it now. It's probably Friday now when you're listening to this. Uh, and I'm sure you were bored to tears by the last Akoko. So now we're here to, to deliver some real entertainment. I just listened to it. It was pretty good. Really? I'm surprised you're still making good. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow, you made it through. Okay. Anyway, we're talking about Stephanie here. Yes. Who was yeah. gracious enough to come down and sit in with us. Now, should I just go through the list of the movies you say you really love on here? She says her all-time favorite movies are Terminator, Amelie, Willow, Willow The Fountain. So, oh, uh, uh, I guess The French, Romeo and Juliet. Yes. Zephyrilis? Is that how you no, it's the uh, oh, 1968. Yeah, but, the, yeah, no, that's the one oh, I, I, I saw in high school. It, yeah. That is the Romeo and Juliet. The, the one the that, you know, that had nudity in it. <laughs> It's, it's the non-Baz Luhrmann <laughs> yeah. bullshit one. I personally love the Baz Luhrmann bullshit one. So. Yeah, you love Baz Luhrmann and all his jacking off on film. I do. It's wonderful. <sighs> anyway. All right, so she also likes Seven, Aliens, the Evil Dead films, Pan's Labyrinth, Leon, uh -oh. Ooh. <laughs> which is, I believe, yeah. the original <laughs> French version of the movie The Professional with Jean Reno and Gary Oldman, uh, Star Wars, um, what is that, OT? The original trilogy. Oh, there you go. Not see. the shit. Prequels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice to see someone specifying there. Fight Club, which I happen to know is one of uh, Leon's favorite movies of all time. You know what? I Whenever somebody pins me down and says, what's your favorite movie? You know, I hate to say a favorite movie. Who likes to say a favorite? Yeah. But, you know, I, I always default to Fight Club. But I actually don't watch it that much. And it came on HBO. Like, I caught it just the other day. Yeah, it's my favorite movie. <laughs> it's, it's so awesome. It is. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really watched it um, recently, but I think I watched it enough that first year it came out to um, last a lifetime. <laughs> Watch it again. It's more awesome than you remembered it. <laughs> Every time I see it, I get something else out of it. Yeah. I do. But that's David Venture for you. So, yes. you know, And I'm really looking forward to the new movie written by that writer, Chuck Palahniuk, for one thing, uh, Choke, right. which is coming out here in September, I want to say. Uh, but the reviews from Cannes was that it was great, just really, really dark and messed up. Really? Because I, I thought like the early reviews were that it was kind of eh. But most of the things I've heard about it said this is really good, but it's not a Hollywood commercial film at all. You know, even much less so than Fight Club was. Do you know that that's translation for it's slowly paced? Yeah, but you could say that to – some people said that about Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, and that's in my top ten films of all time. That's a commercial film, though. I, I don't know that it is. I can't argue that. It's not ultra commercial. It's not like what you see for the, the mainstream audience. But it's it, it pulls in mainstream people. It pulled in more people, like like the kind of demographic you wouldn't expect it to. Yes, but what if the lead role had been played by Sam Rockwell instead of Jim Carrey? I would have loved it even more. Well, I, 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 I don't think it would have, have made been, a difference. I don't think it would have been considered. I don't think it would be as easy to make the argument that it was mainstream then. 
I think mm-hmm. the main reason so many people even saw it was because Jim Carrey was in it. True, but they still loved it anyway, yeah. despite Jim Carrey being in it. Well, it's one of the best movies ever made. Okay. In my, you know, carefully thought out. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, she also likes 28 Days Later, Jurassic Park, and Speed. What kind of speed? Like methamphetamine? <laughs> oh, wait. Or, yeah, or crank. I'm more of a crank man myself. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Adderall? <laughs> yeah. Man, she knows the specifics. <laughs> there was one of them she mentioned early. Like most of them, I, I give full thumbs up. But there was one of the early ones you say, where I'm like, say what? Is it The Fountain? Yes. See, because that's a very, like, hit or miss film for people. I love The Fountain. Yeah. I, I thought it was the most beautiful film I'd seen in such a long time. Cyrus and I agree on everything. Except the fountain. Except the fountain? No, we don't agree, generally speaking, on films that are really visually metaphorical. Generally speaking. That's true. Like, you don't like the real surreal films, and I totally adore them. Yeah, that's true. David Lynch, all that stuff. I'm all about that stuff. And the fountain is one of those movies. There's just a little bit of an actual plot, and it's mainly told through visual imagery. Yeah, it was just so beautiful. It was just an emotional ride. And for me, like, I went to the theater, and... I had to pull my car over driving home because I had to break down and cry Aww. for just like 30 minutes because it's, it's just an emotional journey. And I guess for people, it's you're either on it or you're not because my sister totally didn't take to it. She hated that film. Well, no, no. I mean, I, I broke down and cried, too, because that was two hours that, man, I could have been watching <laughs> Underdog but doing could, something cool. All with. I could think of is if there had been some guy on a date with you that night, Stephanie, they would have scored so <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it, except any other guy except you would have been like, tears. well, that <laughs> sucked. <laughs> yeah, right, that's true. There is that. It would have been like, gay. <laughs> oh. No, I know that's horrible. I knew when, even as I was saying it, I think I said it fast. Just to get it <laughs> you fast. did. You rushed through it. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like sipping my drink and like, wait, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> he did a spit take. Yeah. Hey, what, what else is on her profile? Uh, well, it says she hates Catwoman, War, and Hostile, which I have not seen War, uh, although I heard it was Is it the one with Jet Li? Yeah. Yes, it's so yeah. bad. But Catwoman, yeah, I mean, come uh, on. Yeah. That's the only th- reason that way you should see that movie is if they ever do it with robots sitting in front of it. I was in London, which makes us worse, when, when that movie came out, and my friend wanted me to go see it, and I said no, and he was like, well, I'll buy your ticket. So that was like nine nine uh, pounds that he paid. Ooh. 18 American bucks to, for right. me to see a piece of shit movie. <laughs> That's probably all probably. the money I made there, too. I, I, you know what? I, I put Catwoman in the category of those movies that, like, they're just so bad that everybody knows it. They're just so easy to pick on. Like, yeah. you, like you don't lose anything by saying, I hate Catwoman. Yeah, or 10,000 B.C. Right. Yeah. Right. Because, like, like, yeah, I hate Catwoman. Yeah, who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> But what's you know, it's interesting when you pick a movie that some people like and you say, I hate that one. You get dangerous about it. Yeah, that's when you get some controversy going. Yeah. Yeah, we've all got a few of those, although none are coming to the top of my head. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the I fountain. know what ours is, Gladiator. <laughs> oh, Gladiator, The movie yes. that Leon and I can't stand and yeah. everybody else loves is Gladiator. Like, boo, yeah. thumbs down, way down. <laughs> I'm just sitting there wow. watching like, I didn't even believe this movie. Yeah. Yeah. To this day, I, I like, that's when I lost my faith completely in the Oscars. I just said, you know what? The only reason I watch these things anymore is to win money from my lame co-workers <laughs> at the bar. <laughs> Too true. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, and then Hostel, which, you know, I mean, I think we're both on the torture porn thing yeah. for that. It's just like, come on. Not really? Funny. Well, I think Carlisle's like the last holdout for that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he, he, you know, he's friends with Eli Roth. <laughs> Alonzo Sandoval sent me a message saying, uh, three question, part question. First off, what is our favorite superhero? Which is obviously he hasn't listened to the other (laughs) Leogs. See, this is not fair because we get so much mail saying, would you guys please stop talking about Spider-Man? And now we're getting drawn into it. Yeah, but we have to, really. Let's face it. I mean, if you were to divide us up into our component parts on a spiritual level, there'd be a big part of that pie graph that would be just Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Uh, so there is no other answer. How about you, Stephanie? Um, my favorite superhero, like, movie? Or just in I think general? Just in general, superhero. In gen- okay. Um, my favorite is definitely probably, like, Iceman. Really? Bobby Drake. Bobby Drake, yeah. No, no. I, okay. He made me laugh. He's the only one. <laughs> um, I don't know. He's just the prankster, and it always it's always been really funny for me. I love reading him. This is interesting because I've never in my life heard somebody say 
Iceman. Yeah, nobody dislikes him. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's a great character, but I've never had it heard anybody pick him out specifically. I guess if I had to pick hardcore, like, I don't know. Well, I mean, now, no, that's fine. No, that's fine yeah, answer. I mean. Now, which Iceman is it that you that you like the most? Uncanny X-Men Iceman, Ultimate X-Men Iceman, or hey, movie no, Iceman? No, I don't even want to go into all that. Or, or like Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends Iceman. If I had, I don't know. I like the character. I guess that's probably it. I like all his incarnations, usually. Well, he's kind of the, he's the, he's always the I'm, eternal teenager of the yes. group in some way. That's true. He is yeah. always the youngest. Yeah. I've always kind of attached to those, like, like, uh, Johnny Storm and like Jubilee, all the ones who were kind of funny, you know, like the little kids. The kinda. young ones. Yeah. 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 But when I was younger, I mean, I also really liked, um, sorry, I'm Asian. So I was also really big into Psylocke cause she was like the kick-ass Asian ninja character. I, I thought she was that. a British chick. I mean, she was like original white man, British. And then later she became. Oh. She's the sister of Captain Britain, and yeah. then she went through the sister of Captain Britain, Siege Perilous, and then came out Asian and was messed with that. by the hand. Sorry, I'm a really big comic book geek. No, I read a no, lot. That's, during no, that, 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 that makes you perfect for this. <laughs> and I, I just, I've always wanted that to be explained to me. Yeah. I had no idea that that was the case. I always thought that she was, but you know what? To be honest, I ex- I don't really read the X Men anymore. I I just kind of yeah, I got I confused. It's like <laughs> you miss an issue <laughs> and <laughs> everything has changed. X Men is what it's not so much you miss an issue, but X Men to me is, has always been like all my children. Yeah, where you can watch it for a <laughs> summer or a year, be totally into it. And then reach a point where the stories are just too dumb and you stop watching. You can stop watching for three years. You pick up a TV guide and read the synopsis and you know everybody who's in there, you could totally pick up from where you left off. And its story might be good again for a while. I, I screwed up. I stopped reading the X-Men right in the middle of that whole magic thing when it got ridiculous. And, like, it was a, it was Colossus's sister who uh, oh, yeah, got, yeah, like, yeah. demon yeah. powers or something. She could, like, teleport. Sure. And had this sword and stuff that she pulled out of this other dimension. Yeah, she was magic and, with a K. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, magic with a K, which, you know, nowadays is probably there's a rapper out there with that name. But uh, she, they turned the whole city into, like, a, of New York City into, like, this mystical city. And it just, it just got too dumb for me. And then, of course, right after that was Age of Apocalypse that everybody still talks about as being awesome. <laughs> It's like, great, I picked a stupid time to stop collecting this comic. I, I hated Age of Apocalypse. Really? I, yeah, really? I didn't even finish I it. it. Oh, okay. I, but maybe that's, it was just like at the peak of when I was reading. I thought it was so good. and then <laughs> I do read the Ultimate X-Men now. I've been reading it since the beginning. I have issues with where they're going with it uh, ever since uh, Brian K. Vaughn took over the yeah. comic, but uh, which I normally like the guy, but, uh, pff, you know. And since Kirkman came over, it's like he's trying to fix some of the things that Vaughn screwed up, but even so... It went way off the rails. Other than that, I do read. I have been reading, of course, because it's the the ultimate creator, the best human being in the entire world, Joss Whedon. Right. His uh his his astonishing X Men. But his his astonishing X Men is such a throwback to the Claremont Burn issues. Oh yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons I like it so much. Yeah. Yeah. I got asked if we would talk about, and there's not there's not much to talk about, but. The new X Men cartoon that's coming up, Wolverine and the X Men. I didn't even know I anything about it. Oh, you haven't seen anything about this? Oh, I posted I've heard a, of it. Yeah, I posted a trailer for it, and to see it, I would liken it just from this trailer to Spectacular Spider Man. It's like the Spectacular Spider Man of X Men, in as much as I can see the influence of all the X Men cartoons that have come before it, and elements from the comic, and it even it almost like it picks up from that that last X Men cartoon, which was. Um, X-Men Evolution. X-Men Evolution. Yes. X Men Evolution. X Men Evolution. Yeah, thank you. And I really like the art style of that. But uh, just to see this trailer, you should check it out when you get a chance. Okay. It looks pretty good. No, I'm sure I'll start watching it. I'm sure I will. In fact, I just got a hold of the entire X- original X Men animated series because I never saw which it was all. decent. I, I would watch it sporadically, but I, I just you know Saturday mornings. What the hell am I going to do? It's funny because most people with the Spider Man that Spider Man cartoon from that era mm-hmm. and that X Men cartoon, what most of what the mainstream non comic people know about those those characters mm-hmm. comes from those cartoons. Oh yeah, it's no. Absolutely. Yeah, I had a birthday party once when I was younger, and I had all my comic books. My friends came over, and these were a bunch of girls, you know, probably like 13. And they actually knew who a lot of the characters were, and I was so surprised. I was like, how the hell do you know these people? And they were like, the X-Men cartoons, we saw that on Saturday mornings. And I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. It's funny because yeah. like, the only reason why more people didn't like comic books for so long and comic book characters here is because... The powers that be that were, you know, controlling the mass media didn't really think it would catch on that much. Whereas you go through the most of the rest of the world, 
And they're like, oh, yeah, comics. I mean, especially the Asian countries. Well, you know, I, I hate to sound unpatriotic, but we do live in America where reading <laughs> is not the highest priority. Well, you would think then we would encourage comic book reading. <laughs> well, you would. Well, I read. <laughs> <laughs> it's reading. Is re 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 America's the only place where people are, like, proud of the fact that they don't read. Like, oh, man, I, I don't read. I, I, I ain't got time for that. Yeah. And so, like, like, wow, you aren't embarrassed to say that? They probably still beat up nerds in other countries in school, though. <laughs> But not for reading. I should have grown up in England. Uh, but there was a second part of the question. What are your guys' favorite superhero movie of all time? Oh. That's a tough oh, one. Because that is there tough. There are like at least three right off the top of my head I could think of that how could I possibly choose between them. Right. You know, uh, for me, and it's really, I kind of, I want to count Spider-Man 1 and 2 as one movie because I have issues with both of them, but I love mm -hmm. them both so much. Uh, and then Superman 2 which I actually do like better than the first one. Uh, come on, General Zod, one of the coolest superhero villains of all time. Sure, down. but the movie's got tons of other problems. And then, honestly, I know I'm just, because, probably because I'm just so taken with it right now, but Iron Man is really just so well done. It's Yeah, it's not because you're taken with it. It's just, it hits every mark. Yeah. It's, it it's really almost good. perfect. Yeah. Except Yeah, except for the, where they had to throw in the, the classic battle between it at the end. I feel like that's where it got kind of... You know, I but up until you. that point, it was, you know, phenomenal. I, I, I thought, thought it was the battle at the end would have been fine if it had just knocked you out of the park. But it didn't mm -hmm. quite. It, it's like, OK, this isn't bad, but this feels like a battle. It should have been in the middle of the movie, not like the climactic final battle. I'd already hit my peak by that point. So the battle was just gravy. No, and, and, it, and it had to end that way. Yeah, because when you don't like everybody's pissed that that Superman re Returns didn't have such a battle in it. Yeah. So, you know, you're you're obligated to throw that in your movie now just to get people to shut the fuck up. I was just going to say, I think Superman Returns had a problem with uh, rehashing the first movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no. I <laughs> really was... liked Superman Returns, but you're right. It, it, it just was it, the same it, stuff. It's like, are you doing a reboot or is it not a reboot? What is it? You're stealing all the same themes, a lot of the same ideas. Uh, I, I just found that very confusing. Superman Returns really captured my heart. I mean, like, that's a, that's a movie that when I watch it, there's certain parts on it that my eyes get wet every oh. time I see it. Yeah, me too. There are parts that give me the chills because they get... Like, Brian Singer gets the iconicness of Superman without yeah. making him completely sh hollow and unapproachable. Either. Right. But there's one major problem that people had with that film that there's just no getting over. There's no big fight. Sure. There's nothing for him to punch in the movie. He's Superman. He should at least once... We should see how truly strong he is. It's not just him catching a Really? Plane. A bullet hitting his eyeball and bouncing off? That doesn't show you how strong <laughs> he is? was just a dude. <laughs> we need to see him get into a physical fight with someone. He needs to fight Darkseid or somebody. I don't but know. But Darkseid wasn't in the movie. Da well, I know. And, and it's Darkseid. I, uh, whatever. <laughs> it's still Darkseid. Ma, his mom named him Darkseid. I'm going to call him Darkseid. <laughs> you can add as many accent grobs he wants. Uh, so but anyway, that, that's the best answer I can give you. I'm actually full of crap. I just realized I'm totally full of crap. It is none of the movies that I said. My favorite movie is oh. not them. Because I was thinking, because we were just talking about superhero superheroes, period. Oh, my favorite oh, movie within is The Incredibles. Incredibles. Yeah, it's Sorry, by far yeah. my favorite superhero yeah. movie. Yeah, because I was thinking too specifically. Right. Now, if you say comic book movies, it's got to be that, that whole fight between those movies. But yeah. superhero movies, The Incredibles. Yeah, absolutely my favorite comic book movie. And my second favorite is Unbreakable. Mm. Yeah. You know, which is strange considering how much I hate M. Night's movies after Unbreakable. I hate all of them after Unbreakable. But Unbreakable, I love so much more than even The Sixth Sense. Oh, me too. Yeah. I, I think it's a lot more rewatchable. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not dependent on the big shock ending. No. As a matter of fact, the ending was probably like the worst part of it. Yeah. Because you went, what? It just felt like, it felt like it was the first part of a trilogy, and it was supposed to be. Right. And unfortunately, none of you fuckers out there actually liked it enough, so there won't be one now, thanks a whole lot. And it's your fault we have the village and all this other shit. Well, just, That's I, true. I had no idea. Oh, oh yeah. Maybe three? Well, the thing is, I mean, he didn't even want to make it a mystery. He wanted to make it a straight superhero movie. And they were like, no, no, no. What you're good at is mystery. So we want you to do that same thing you did with The Sixth Sense. So it totally got hijacked from him, and... He's made so many movies like that because just because the studios have been kind of like on it. Now, certainly he's an independent guy who cries if you tell him you don't like what he's done. But that was a big influence to keep writing these same kind of Twilight Zones. So what was your favorite uh, superhero movie? Um, probably the same ones, except I would have to say Superman, the first one, the original. Cause, uh, it's a hell of an answer. I know. I really love that one. It just And, and I rewatched it recently, and I just, I love it. It's just so good. And, it is. And, um... 
And then also, you know, of course, Iron Man is really up there on my list right now. Yeah. And I'm hoping that The Dark Knight might top that, but um, Batman Begins very good as well. But it's tough. I mean, there's so many, and I'm such a... I just love them all. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I really loved X-Men 2, the first, that opening sequence of oh, Nightcrawler. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so good. I was such a huge X-Men fan, and it just blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Like, seriously. <laughs> like. Oh, I bet. I just... I was a big enough fan that I can't even bring myself to completely hate X3 because I love the first two so much. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a big disappointment, but you know what? It's not as bad as everybody said it was. If you had never heard of the X-Men and you saw that movie, you'd go, I don't really see what the problem I is. I actually enjoyed it, you know, and, yeah. and I thought the performance. I like love, well, I love Thompkin Jansen, but, yeah. you know, Jean Grey, and I thought she did great. Like, it just was totally nostalgic for me, like her performance. As, you know, turning evil was great, even though they didn't do any fire. She was the best part about it. When she was being Dark Phoenix, she was scary looking. She was like, okay, that's kind of freaky. My biggest problem with that movie, Charles Xavier was a dick. (laughs) It's so funny you say that, because in the comics, he was always a dick. He'd be real nice one minute, and then he'd pull some some mind fuck on them. He'd he'd like, (laughs) oh, the professor's dead. For 100 issues, and then like, oh, I'm sorry, X-Men, I had to fake my death because of blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And they're all going, what? You couldn't have sent what? an email? <laughs> <laughs> and he like would barely give him an explanation and just move on. He was yeah. always pulling dick moves. No, but he's like a dick in the sense of like, he's going, yeah, fuck you, whatever, I'm a professor. I mean, in X3. You know, when he's going, Logan, shut the hell up. Did I, I'll tell you what, when I want your opinion, I'll ask you for it. Other than that, shut the fuck up. And Dude. that's not the professor. You can't tell me that if you were the, the, the leader of that school, you wouldn't say that to Logan, like, at least once a week. You can't tell <laughs> me that if you had Logan anywhere near you, you'd be anything but ultra polite at all times. <laughs> you know what? I know that I would, but Unless af- you're Magneto. after three weeks, I think, like, that part of me would just come out. I'd just be like, oh, get over yourself. Go, go, go back to Paul Mitchell and get some more mousse for your hair already. Yeah, that cigar chomp, and you're so tough. Everybody's so sick of hearing about what it, what you used to do and how you can't remember this and you're the I'm the best at what I do and the claws slip sometimes. Shut up. Yeah, right. It's like we have all heard of a Napoleon complex here, Shorty. <laughs> <laughs> so, Plus, you know, why don't you stop driving Kitty Pride up the wall and just do her already? You know she wants to. Right, right. And like you mean rogue. I guess in the in yeah the in, the, in the movies in the movies, <laughs> in, the in, the, movies. Yeah. in the in the comics she was kid. always yeah. taking Kitty Pride with him to places. It's like why she's completely <laughs> useless. Why would you even take her with you? Well, obviously he just likes driving the pubescent girls to the point of tears. <laughs> 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 well, I and also I would say to him, I'm like, look, that's that's. That's Scott's girlfriend, man. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of pathetic what you're doing. Everybody's laughing behind your back. Get your own woman. Yeah. And, you know, bad. You know, now the new series of Wolverine in the X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was this? I didn't sign on for this bullshit. Why did Wolverine get top billing? He hasn't even been here since the beginning. Well, you know, the funny thing is, it's like, it's the movies that drive the cartoons. Yeah. Like, the reason we got Batman the Animated Series was because... They made Batman movies, and they were getting ready to make another one. So, hey, let's promo it. We got Spectacular Spider-Man because Spider- cause of Spider-Man 3. And now we're getting this X-Men you know, cartoon, which is Wolverine the X-Men because we got a Wolverine movie coming up. Just like when they recently did Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes. Mm-hmm. But they changed it to Superman and the Legion of Superheroes because there was a Superman movie out. And they were like, we need a direct promo tie-in with this. Yeah. Last question from this guy, from Alonzo Sandoval. Didn't we just answer one question? No, it was a three-part question. It was Jeez. the third part. I know. Alonzo, don't, don't, don't be such a hog, man. <laughs> what is your least favorite superhero movie? Uh, I think I already said mine. <laughs> Catwoman. Catwoman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you sure did. <laughs> now, Steph, don't, don't you think that it's possible that if you were to see it again in a room full of your best friends and everybody was drunk, that you all could, like, you that know, play? Have sex with Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait. Is that what were you talking about? Not yet, dude. I'm trying to set you up later. Oh, sorry, sorry. Forget that. This is not the come online. We're here. Do you think that maybe you could enjoy it at that point? I don't know. I guess maybe if we had, uh, you know, okay, I have no idea. <laughs> that's hard. Like, like, I agree with Leon. That's one of those ones that's so obvious to hate. I can't even really hate it. Well, then know? I'll go with Superman Returns. Damn. Sorry, Damn. Leon. You have seen Superman for the Quest for Peace, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. You can't tell me. Yeah, Superman I was say. A- a- and but you were saying that. that it's got to be controversial, and, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's true. Okay, okay, okay. Based on that, you're, you're right. You're right. Um, 
Wow. Yeah, my answer for has always been Batman and Robin. Yeah. Because it just I just don't think you get any worse than <laughs> yeah. that. I mean, even like I thought it was Superman before up until Batman and Robin. However, okay, keeping with my my theme of like, because anybody can hate Batman and Robin, there's nothing likable <laughs> about it. I'm gonna go with Ang Lee's Hulk. You see, I didn't hate Ang Lee's Hulk. Oh, I hated it. I had issues with it all over the place, but um. Wow. Uh, really? It would probably have to be Ghost Rider. I, really? I, I saw it, and I just... Th- there was one thing I did like about it. I liked Wes Bentley as the villain. I really liked him as the <laughs> that, villain. You know what? Of all the things about that movie, to hate, that's the thing I, I, I hate the most about it. Oh, really? I liked him as the villain. I don't like what they did with the special effects around him or anything like that, but I liked the way he was playing. The little character. emo villain? No, I liked him. What can I tell you? <laughs> uh, but everything else I hated, I hated Nicolas Cage so much in this, I almost don't even want to watch Ruthless uh, Raising Arizona ever again. Oh. You know, it's like it was retconned his entire acting history for me. I hated him so much in it. See, I think Ghost Rider is a bad movie. At the same time, there's some parts of it that is so bad in a fun way. And I guarantee you, not not you, Cyrus, because I you're, you're more intelligent than this, but I, I swear to you, if that movie had ended and it said the director was Robert Rodriguez, You'd have tons of hipsters saying like, oh, it's so funny. You see how much fun he had with it? And it was so tongue-in-cheek. And he loves making bad movies like this because he has so much fun with it. It's like, shut up. It's 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 Drek whether he's trying to do it or not. I think he just doesn't have the balls to try and do an actual good movie. If he can go... Hey, look, it's just a bad movie. It's just fun. It's a tribute to the bad movies from before. Then he can get away with whatever the fuck he wants. Exactly. It's but, a total cop-out. The yeah. biggest in the world. I, I offer this challenge to Robert, Rodri- Robert Rodriguez, filmmaker, who lives here in town, to make start out, make a movie that's a good movie. You start out with the idea that I'm going to make a good movie. It's not based on anything from the past. It's just a new movie, and you're going to do a good job. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Matthew McConaughey's brother, whose name is Rooster, <laughs> who looks exactly like him, except with a gut. He just had a son. Guess what his son, he named his son. I, I don't know. Turkey? Miller Lite. <laughs> he named his son Miller Lite with a Y instead of a I in the light part of it. So okay. he didn't even misspell light correctly. Miller uh, Lite McConaughey? Miller Lite, well, yeah, I assume so, yeah. 